We at EPS Ruby Park believe that each student has a talent that just needs to be discovered. So here, apart from academics, we also have a lot of co-curricular activities. We also host programs on special occasions, be it Saraswati Puja or Republic Day or any other. We also organize many activities to encourage the students to spread their wings. We, the, two, the teachers also encourage the students to give a lot of competitive exams, which improves their knowledge outside the textbook. All these activities enhance their confidence and helps them to face life with open arms. So uh, a very almost good afternoon to all of you. Good afternoon, ma'am. And thank you for having us here. Uh, it's always a pleasure to come to a school like DPS Ruby Park. When I was traveling to your school with Jihan, I was telling her about how wonderful this school is and that academically you are very strong. And because of our association with you for so many years through culinary arts, uh, we have also been able to discover what uh, your friend rightly said that you're very strong with the extracurricular activities as well. And actually that is what makes you into a whole individual in life. You know, and that's wonderful. We're really proud to be associated with you, ma'am. And uh, it's a privilege to be here with all of you today. One of the reasons we organized this interactive session with you is because um, Okay, well, before I say this, I must also tell you that uh, how many of you have heard about the Young Chef Olympiad? Many of you. And it's going on right now in our campus. It started a couple of days ago from Delhi. And the chefs, the, the mentors, the students have all traveled to Kolkata. They have been arriving since last night. And Jihan is one of them. Uh, it's one of the most exciting times of the year for us, the IIHMites. And uh, apart from the fact that our campus is buzzing with, with mentors, mentees uh, from 65 countries all over the world, apart from that fact, it is also so fascinating to be interacting with all of these people. I had a particular conversation with Jihan in the car when I was coming. So I read a lot of, personally, I read a lot of war literature and uh, Second World War, First World War, different kinds of war literature. Psychology interests me, I was telling her that. The, the Syrian war, which is going on in real time, you know, we get to read so much about it in the papers. How many of you have been, you know, seeing pictures and hearing about the Syrian war in the papers? Can I, yeah, yeah? So it's, it was really fascinating to be interacting with a person who lives, she happens to live in a place which is very close to the Syrian border, 17 kilometers from the Syrian border. So she happens to be someone who, who witnesses, you know, almost what's going on over there. So if a bomber plane flies and bombs the, the area, she, she gets to see it, you know. So it's that interesting and it was, I got goosebumps when I was having these conversations with her because uh, one thing I discovered uh, it, during our short journey from the IIHM till the DPS Ruby Park is that human emotions and what we want and what we need at the base, the basic is always the same, you know. Uh, I was also sharing uh, the fact that I had been to Jordan and you know, it's one of those very beautiful, peaceful, one of the most peaceful countries in the world with an amazing, eclectic, funny mixture of the conservative and the liberals. It's amazing. And uh, that is what, uh, that is also something that we were discussing about. Which brings me to the fact that uh, becoming a chef for a woman in her country was also a challenge. In our country, the challenges, ma'am, that we usually face is that, you know, our parents belong to a generation which did not really go to hotel management institutes. So it is very 
the, the curriculum doesn't match with the normal curriculum of a college. So if you are, you know, if you go to a, to a conventional college, you will not be uh, probably prohibited, but you can't really dress up. Whereas if you go to a hotel management college, it is important, one of the most important things to be well groomed. Lipstick is a part of our uniform. So these are things which probably the previous generation couldn't or can't relate to sometimes. Of course, of course, we also get to meet very kind parents who really are supportive of what the child wants. But then usually the reaction is, if anybody at home says, I want to be a chef, the reaction is, Oma, Basham Majbi. Do you want to clean dishes? <laughs> you know, so, uh, and that is, the most interesting part of the conversation that I had with Jihan uh, during my journey. And uh, she will be sharing with you uh, that bit as well. Point we're trying to make here is we don't want, we're not here to tell you, hey, become chefs or join a hotel management college or anything like that. You know, it is very, very important. One of the things that uh, we have, people my age, and I'm sure ma'am, sir, Jihan, you would agree with me, ma'am, you would agree with me when I say this, is that at this stage of your life, when you wake up in the morning, if you do not want to go to work, if you hate going to work, that is the biggest curse that you can have as a human being. Mark my words. It's not a relationship, it's not a failed relationship. It is not the fact that your child doesn't love you or you cannot love somebody back or someone doesn't love you back. It's not about relatives not wanting to see you know, your progress. It's not about relatives who gossip about you, no. The biggest curse that a person can have in his life is when you reach your 30s, late 20s and 30s. If you get up in the morning and if you think, oh God, I don't want to, I don't know how I'm going to spend the whole day. I don't want to go to work. That's the biggest curse, I tell you. It can spiral you into depression. It can spiral you into becoming a person who you are not. And that is essentially what education is here for. It is here to make each individual student, as your friend again rightly said, that DPS Ruby Park believes that every single student has a particular special talent. And it is important. What does a school do? A school helps in nurturing that particular talent in you. And if that doesn't bloom, what is the meaning of education? Do you agree? Yes. I'm sure you do. So now, without much ado, I'm going to pass the microphone on to Jihan. She's a professor in the Royal Academy of Culinary Arts, but apart from that, which is her current profession, she has been a full-time chef. And she has a very interesting story to tell you about how she became a chef. By the way, she's also a graduate. Of, she's, she holds a bachelor's degree in English literature. Yeah. Good afternoon. How are you? First of all, um, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to visit the school. Uh, India has been very good through the, um, the last days of, uh, I've been here. Uh, very nice welcoming. The people of India, they are amazing. I can see your faces. They are very nice. Uh, thank you for that. So let me introduce myself a bit. But first of all, let me ask a question. Is any one of you interested in food? Oh, in eating or cooking? Eating. 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 Oh my God, that's nice. That's nice. I like. I like that. So, what do you cook usually? <laughs> but oh, that's a good cooking. Biryani is. That's a big thing to cook. I thought you would tell me some French fries. I um, I know how to open a can of tuna. No. <laughs> so excellent. Do you like it? Do you follow your mom's recipe or you just go with your own recipe? Both. Okay, that's nice. 
What about you? Do you do you like to cook? Yes? What do you usually cook? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. What else? Tea. That's a good cook. Tea is very hard to cook. You know? I really, uh, it took me like years to know how to boil the water and to put the tea bag in the water. This is very hard. Thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> okay. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Chef Jihan from Jordan. I, um, I finished or I graduated around 12 years ago. I studied in Oh, let me tell you the story about how I decided to be a chef. Since I was 12 or 13, I started to be in the kitchen all the time. I was a little nice choppy girl, very choppy. I don't want to say fat, but I was extra weight. Yes, a little bit obese. So every day in the kitchen, just cooking, mixing things together, started to come up with some you know, a huge in recipes. I just take a bar of chocolate, throw it in the microwave, little bit of ice cream. I just throw some chocolate uh, syrup or whatever on top of it, and just eat, eat, eat. Every day I will come up with a new recipe, new recipe, always in the kitchen cooking. So this was when I was like 12 or 13. Then I finished high school. Now it's time for me to go for the university. In Jordan, we had no culinary school at all. The only thing that you can do is to choose a normal major. So the thing that was available is English literature. I started the journey of studying English literature. First year, second year, only like six years before graduating, I was going back home. And I saw in one of the buildings, they are hanging the sign of the Royal Academy of Culinary Arts. I almost wanted to cry, no way. Now there is a culinary art school in Jordan. Why not four years ago? So I took my decision. I wanted to drop university and go immediately and study at a culinary school. So then I had like an agreement with my dad that no, finish university because there's only six months for me to graduate. And then you can go to school, to this culinary school. And everyone was against my dad and against me. How come? You want to pay money for your daughter to go and learn how to cook? He will be, yes. And my, my mom used to tell me, do you really want to spend your life in the kitchen? Is this is a thing that you want to do? I was like, yes, I don't mind spending my whole life in the kitchen. So I started my journey and it was the best two years of my life. I must say that. What is nice about that? that every day I was very happy. I don't remember myself going to university uh, because I'm, I want to learn about this novel or I'm happy in, uh, in that or the university is nice. No, I used to go because it's a must. I can't exceed the absences. I have to go there. But there was no passion at all. But in the academy, no. I used to start my classes at 10. At 7 o'clock, you will see me there. Just sitting with my friends, discussing some recipes, maybe eating something that uh, my friend prepared yesterday. So it was very fun. We finished at 5. We used to leave the campus around 7 to 8. Why? Because we're happy. I'm following my passion. So this is the thing that I want you to consider. I know all our parents, it's either they want us to be doctors, they want us to be engineers, management, business, anything. But if you want to wake up every day in the morning and to say that, yes, I love my job, this is my decision, I decided to be a chef or I decided to be in the uh, hotel or uh, hospitality industry, then you will never regret. That's why I'm not here to tell you, please be chefs. I'm not here to tell you that you have to go to the hospitality industry. I'm here just to tell you that please follow your passion. I know that I can see a lot of talents over here in your eyes. I'm sure that you guys are very talented. So just follow your talent. This is your passion. This is what makes you wake up every day in the morning happy. You will sleep in seconds 
Why? Because you're happy. Happiness is a key. So, yes. Anyone is this or thinking of joining the hospitality industry? Very nice. I see. Okay. Why? Can I ask you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I love to cook. I love. It's like it's my hobby, and I want to follow my passion and my. I Very nice. Like and you look nice also. <laughs> you look hospitality like. And uh, just to agree with her, what's nice about that? That I told you, I'm a person that I love food. So imagine to stay next to food all the time. You cook for people, and you taste all the time. So every day there is a new dish. You're not sick of, oh, mom, you cooked this one last week. I don't want to have the same dish today. This is not an option, because every day there is a new dish to cook. Every day there is a new dish to taste. This is something good, yeah. But you need to watch, <laughs> to watch your weight, please. <laughs> and in hospitality, life is the same. Grooming, shaving is a must. Yeah, putting lipstick is a must. Doing your hair is a must. Wearing heels is a must. So all these things are nice. Ladies, come on. You follow the trend. <laughs> How did I manage my weight? Uh, so I told you I grew up as an obese kid. <laughs> and I was totally fine with that. Uh, because I love food. I'm happy. I remember that whenever I, I, um, I took money from my mom one day. So I went to the supermarket and said, what do I want to have? So I just bought um, one stick of butter. And really, I was eating butter instead of chocolate. <laughs> it tasted nice. Yes. And then I started to develop my skin. How did I de develop that? So I bought the butter. And they used to take it home. I, let, I put a little bit of sugar on top and eat. So it started to taste much nicer. After like six years of doing that, I started to become really a little bit more overweight. <laughs> so, yeah. And then there was a time for me to stop. So I started uh, dieting and doing some exercise and everything. And it took me like three years to lose the weight. And something helped me that I used to be short, and suddenly I went up. I don't know how. Hormones, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, uh, dieting for like three years. So I managed to maintain uh, this weight. I only taste, I don't eat the food. <laughs> See, being a chef, it's not you eat only restricted food. I can't eat this one because this will make me fat. No, it will not, because we are not eating. We are tasting. We are satisfying our tasting buds. Imagine. Yes. A small piece of chocolate it will satisfy my tasting buds. No need to eat a whole bar of chocolate. Come on. Because there is more flavors to try. So, questions. Ask me questions, please. No questions? Mm. Yeah. You ask questions. Okay. You know, after graduating from the academy, um, and it was not known at all, not known at all to have females in the kitchen. So I went and I started to work at a five-star hotel for seasons in Amman. It was very hard in the kitchen because. 55 female, 55 male chefs, and it was only me. Yes. So then I realized that I need to grow some muscles. <laughs> yes, just to go with the flow. They are males, they will not beat me. They were a lot, by the way. 55 is too much for me. <coughs> but uh, yeah, I managed to, uh, to be part of that. Because every day I used to hear, the, hear them saying, why you are here? This is not the right place for you. Being in the kitchen, go to the kitchen in your house, not to a kitchen in a hotel. These jobs are for males only. And that was a challenge. I'm sure that you will have some challenges like this. It's either from the mentality of the parents that, no, hospitality life is not a job that you can take. 
or um, they just dream. When 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 you guys were born, they they decided that okay, he looks like a doctor. I want him to be a doctor in the future. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure my dad when he saw me overweight and he decided that I will be a chef in the in the future. Yes. <laughs> so. Uh, one second. So it was very hard, but I decided not to give up. And nowadays, people start to be more open. They understood the idea that, yes, females can be in the kitchen. And the number of females in the kitchen is increasing, increasing every day. If you are going to a restaurant, and of course, there's very nice chefs, male chefs, of course, with nice smiles and everything. But it's always nice whenever you go to a buffet in a hotel and you see a lady standing there. Yes, how can I help you? What can I prepare for you? It's always nice to have a female there. And always. Yeah, so what do you work, Jihan? They will ask me. I will be, uh, yeah, I'm a chef. No way, you are a chef. So you will always surprise people. They will like that. Why? Because everything that has to do with food just attract people. Food, food, food. <laughs> and Indian food is amazing. Especially with the spices. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't stand the heat. Food uh, is very spicy here in India. Flavors. Yes? Uh, Ma'am, I usually really love to bake. So while I'm baking, I uh, like to like dress the cake with um, buttercream, then use whipped cream. Um, since I like whipped cream more than buttercream, I've always tried to make it, but I, since I don't have like an electric mixer, I don't know how to make it up. Is there any alternative? Of course there is. What you have to do, first of all, try to make the whipped cream very cold in the fridge, extremely cold. And when you want to whip the cream, just bring a bowl full of ice and then place another bowl on top of this ice, um, on top of the ice, add the cream, one squeeze of lemon and start whipping. It will take only, only like three minutes of mixing and you will have an excellent whipped cream. Now we're giving some advices for cooking. <laughs> Anyone else? Question? Yes. <laughs> what did you love, uh, love to cook as a child? Um, what I used to love to cook as a child. Okay, first of all, I, I started with the normal cooking. Like cooking rice with chicken, rice with meat, rice with fish, something like this. Pasta. And then I, I tried to, to move to baking. I started to make cakes and um, some pies, some pastries. I started to like this more. So now what I, I'm, I'm always happy or, um, to bake a nice piece of bread. I'm always happy to make a nice cake and to see the result. The cookie is my thing. Whenever I'm in the house, I'm bored. Yes, cookies, cookies, cookies. Everyone around me is happy. Because always there is a smell, they know that there is nice cookie coming out of the oven. So yeah, baking is the thing that I really enjoy. Yes? <laughs> Why do you come to India? Okay. <laughs> That's a good question, buddy. I like your question. Come on. Why CEO? So, um, because of the YCO. YCO is the Young Chefs Olympiad. Uh, this is the sixth year for the Young Chefs Olympiad. It's a great event that everyone all over the world wants to be part of that. So from Jordan, this is our third year to participate in the YCO. Uh, that's why we came here. I have my participant, he's at the hotel staying. Uh, he is competing with other students and uh, pray for him to win, please. Please. Yes? I wanted to ask that uh, you, uh, you being a professional chef, Mom, uh, you told that you come to India. Mom, like yeah, many chefs came uh, in our school when uh, for the first round. Uh, you went to any school for the selecting the members? Ah, you and uh, from uh, our school. Yes. 
Okay. Um, I, just to make sure that I understood your question. First of all, you look so cute. I love your eyes. <laughs> oh, look, now he's shy. No, 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 I mean it. Okay. So I, uh, I don't know if I got you wrong. Your question is, how did we select the, the competitor to come or any of the schools? No, you went to some school and experienced the uh, As a judge, how do you feel? Yes. Okay. So how did we select him to come to the YCO? Um, a lot of people wanted to participate. So just to eliminate that, we decided that we will only go through the students that they just graduated, freshly graduated. Then we took them. There was a national uh, competition going, it's called Orica. It's done in all uh, the Middle East. Uh, so we made them participate in Horeca to see who will win more. So Mohanad, uh, his name, um, my competitor, uh, he ranked number one in the international, uh, sorry, in the national uh, Jordanian cuisine, and of course number one in hygiene and the uh, number one in uh, creativity. So that's why we choose Mohanad to come here. Please. Ma'am, uh, what is the best jo Jordan, what is the best and easiest Jordan dish that you will suggest to me? Okay. And ma'am, how to make it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, our national, let me first tell you about our national dish. Our national dish is called mansaf. And it's a little bit weird, because some people, what mansaf, how do you do it? Mansaf is we pile rice in a big plate, and on top of the rice, uh, we don't use basmati rice, we use um, a short grain rice. Why? Because it's a little bit sticky. We want it to be sticky. And uh, we cook lamb meat and dried yogurt, where we make yogurt, we dry it out in bags, and then we will make like a bowl. Yeah. Hungry. Yeah, something similar maybe. And then we dry it in the sun. After that, we soak it in water, make a sauce. After we cook the meat until it's really tender, we put it in this yogurt. Then we take the meat, we arrange it on top of the rice. We add a little bit of nuts, a little bit of parsley, and it's a must. In Jordan, we don't eat with our hand. But only with mansa, it's a must to eat with your hand. And there is a technique for that, where you put one hand behind your back like this, because um, you will be standing next to each other around the, the plate of mensa, and you eat with this hand, uh, you have to make a bowl. That's why we use sticky rice. You have to make a bowl, and you just throw it in your mouth. You need to be talented to do that. I'm <laughs> doing that, <laughs> yes. So this is the traditional dish. But if you want to know uh, an easy dish to make, we have mjaddara, um, which is similar to Indian cooking. It's rice and lentils with a lot of crispy onions on top. You just soak the lentils, boil the lentils, and cook the rice in the water of the lentils. Fry some onion, and it's ready to go. Yes, very, very tasty. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, ma'am, uh, sometimes uh, we try to bake something in the microwave in our house. But though I'm not you know, you know, much you know, okay with cooking, so sometimes if it burns, uh, the, like for example, if I put a cake to you know, bake in the microwave, it burns. So ma'am, do you have any experience with this? Any fun experience? And, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about baking in the microwave. Why do you want to bake in the microwave? No. Uh, because, uh, because I tried that. So. Okay. So baking in the microwave, um, there is only a few recipes that will work. Things that they have a lot of eggs that it will cook fast. I don't promise you it will taste good. But you know, cooking in microwave is very different. It's not that good for baking. Because in the microwave, I don't know if you know the heating process, how it's done. And yeah. So the heating process in the microwave, um, like a battery, there is minus and there is the plug, okay? So in the microwave, they will, uh, a shaking will start to happen like this. So they will turn all the small particles inside the food. So the minus will be in front of the minus. It will start to shake like this. 
So it will create heat. It will keep on rotating things. That's why we don't like microwave because it changes in the chemistry of the food. The food will dry out or it will burn very fast. Uh, the taste of the food will not really be very good that much. That's why I try to bake in the oven more, my friend. In the microwave, I don't recommend you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, ma'am, as I and my mother love spice, seafood. Right? But my father... That we as Indians, do you like spicy food? Whereas my father can't tolerate any spice. So is there any other thing that will... That the spicy food will remain, the spiciness will remain, but it will not affect my father. <laughs> you my friend uh, from my uh, my three days experience here in India I tried different way to control uh, myself when I eat something spicy without start tearing without going like this without drinking too much water and I think there is no solution if you can't stand the heat just give him food without spicy <laughs> not spicy <laughs> yes I think maybe some yogurt with that will help Lassi, you have Lassi, right? Yeah. This Lassi thing, amazing. Reduce the spices. You can put some spicy uh, spices in your plate, not in the whole dish. Okay? Yes? Uh, good afternoon and welcome to DPS, ma'am. Thank uh, you. I wanted to ask you, how was your first day at the academy and uh, what was the first dish you cooked there? Okay, thank you. And you look like a hospitality girl, by the way. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, so my first day at the academy, I was so excited, very excited to go there. And really, I woke up at 5 o'clock, just to prepare myself to be there at 10 o'clock. It took me 5 hours. I, know, I, I already arranged from the day before what to wear and everything. And it was different than um, anything I would wear for university. You know, I went out, I bought a suit, I bought a heel. Uh, so, you know, some makeup and, um, you know, curly hair sometimes is not really suitable for hospitality. So I straightened my hair. I was totally ready. I went to the academy and um, they divide us into teams. So uh, each team is around four to five students. So the first two hours, like, we were introducing ourselves among the teams. And the first dish I cooked, which is a Swiss stew, Yes, it's called um, uh, uh, beef blanket. Yeah, uh, sorry, it was chicken blanket. Uh, we cooked the chicken with vegetables and uh, the sauce. You add some butter and uh, flour to the sauce to make it. And you always have to take some of the sauce and put it on top. So it will, it will make it very shiny. So this is my first dish at the academy. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, you said that uh, they divide you into groups at first. Ma'am, uh, I wanted to ask, ma'am, when you were uh, make, making your food with, uh, with your group, ma'am, how did you feel to cook your first dish there with your team and all? Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is a very nice question. Um, you know, all of us joined the culinary school because we know that we want to be chefs. We love, we love cooking. It's not a thing that I just want to do, to be a chef. So, the four of us, everyone has his own style of cooking. So we were fighting. No, I want to do it this way. No, I want to do it this way. My way, that way. Until our chef came and he was like, you listen to me, uh, dear um, kid. I was not a kid, but he told me that. So you listen to me, we have a recipe, which is the standard for this, um, for this dish. You have to follow it exactly, not to follow what's in your mind, not to cook it the way that you used to cook it. You have to learn the standards. You have to learn the basic way of making this thing. After that, whatever thing that you want to add to the dish, like to answer her question, maybe this dish, the standard, is not spicy. Maybe after that I can take the dish and add a little bit of uh, spice to it. So this is my creativity. I, th I try to create more things, more details, to add more details to the dish. But 
in the team, no, you have to follow the recipe, you have to follow the standard, and this make us all shush. We did not argue anymore about that. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, which is that one cuisine that how much ever you make or eat, you never lose the excitement? One cuisine, okay. And that Japanese cuisine. I'm in love with the Japanese cuisine. So making sushi and making Japanese dishes are something that I really love. I'm always there standing and doing sushi and cutting. The cutting, the nice skills of the Japanese. With very thin slices, making gold dishes, I really love that. I'm never bored of the Japanese cuisine. Thank you. Yes? How many countries did you cook? In how many countries did I cook? Okay, in... I have to, uh, uh, as working, I only worked in uh, three countries. Uh, I worked in uh, Jordan, I worked in Dubai, and then I worked for like two months in Switzerland as an internship. So this is the, these are the countries that I, um, I try to cook in. Uh, but of course, during my 12 years, I went to Greece, and uh, I cooked in one of the kitchens with the chefs for like two days. It was nice. Uh, to learn about Greek food. Um, maybe in Lebanon. Yeah, one day for like two hours I, I was in the kitchen with, uh, with the chefs. And uh, that's it, yes. Yes, please. Ma'am, uh, when you came to India, what was your first dish that you tasted? When I came to India? No, the first dish that you tasted. The first dish. Okay, the first dish I tasted when I came to India, it was dosa. Yes. And what was the experience? Ah, amazing. Very nice. I'm in love with the Indian food. But the spice, I'm only going like this. But the chicken is amazing, masala. Now, according to you, what is your favorite dish among all the Indian dishes you've tasted so far? Uh, I guess the butter chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, have you uh, ever, uh, like, Tried or experimented with, uh, experimented making Indian dishes? Yeah, um, so because I worked in uh, in UAE, so I worked with a lot of uh, Indian chefs. I, they taught me how to, to do these types of food, and uh, they taught me butter chicken. And when I came here, I tasted butter chicken again, and it's still my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, with the microwave or there's only one thing. Have you ever tried that? Yeah. Okay, first of all, let's agree on something. Microwave is not for cooking. If I hear microwave again, I would be really mad. Okay. So that's true. Nowadays we see in, um, in all the social media, chefs, they are cooking and uh, using one thing. Um, there is a whole, a whole uh, course that um, I used to give. Um, and now one of, um, I gave it to one of my colleagues, which is the dishes in one pan, where you do cook a whole recipe using one pan in the stove without using anything. Uh, these dishes are for people uh, like you if you want to go and study abroad, uh, for ladies that they do work, they want to cook fast. Um, and uh, of course they will taste very nice because you only combine flavors together in one pan. Thank you. Yes. Good. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Ma'am, as we know, hotel management and culinary activities has a lot of scope in today's world. But in our country, we haven't still considered uh, hotel management as the first choice career uh, as like uh, engineering or medical. So how do you think that we can make that yes. change in I our mindset? You know what? Um, since, since I arrived to India, uh, and we are, I was talking with the other chefs from, uh, by the way, we are from um, a lot of countries together in this competition. Uh, and yesterday, after we arrived at the hotel, we were talking about how amazing the Indian hospitality, how amazing the welcoming of the Indians. You will always smile with um, um, nice, nice uh, faces, always smiling and uh, Yesterday, in the way from the airport to reach um, the hotel, we were dancing all the time. So you are perfect for the hospitality industry. 
all of this, there is an, an, an issue, especially with Jordanians, let's say, that um, we don't mind at all. So a chef will be st standing at uh, the buffet like that. <laughs> How come any guest will come and order something from you if you're standing like this? But with Indians, no, since I arrived, you guys always smiling, always saying hi and very welcoming, very welcoming. So you, I think you were born for hospitality life, to be honest with you. And I discussed that with other chefs. There is my friend from Wales, a chef from Wales, uh, near England. Um, yeah, we were discussing that, that you, you guys are born for hospitality life. That's why to change this mentality, it has to start with you, not with what the uh, culture wants. In all our culture, they don't understand that. So you change that. You take one extra step and take the decision that you want to be in hospitality life because it suits you. Yes. Yes, please. Um, the spicy girl. <laughs> Have you ever tasted any Bengali like fish or anything like that? Like what? Fish. Fish? Yeah, I did. I did try two types of dishes, uh, of fish dishes. It's very nice, but I don't know from what area. Uh, Maybe from the names of the fishes. She was in Delhi. Oh, yeah, I was in Delhi, exactly. And I went to. Um, uh, there was like a festival uh, celebrating the 150th birthday anniversary of uh, Gandhi. Yeah. So I went, uh, there was an area with uh, different stations from different countries, uh, from different areas of India, so representing foods. So I tried a lot of food over there. But I can't tell the name. Sorry, they are a little bit hard. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Butchka and Butchka? Butchka, Butchka. It's a fun, it's a street food. I will show you on our way back. Mm, no. It's, it's, not safe. it's not safe. I wouldn't recommend street food for you right now. Now that we still have the Young Chef Olympiad. Uh, okay. <laughs> the last. Make sure I, I try it before I leave. I'll promise you to try it. It's good. Yeah. Uh, uh, Indian seafood are better than Indian cuisine. Okay. Street food. She told me not to try it. You talk to her. In my way back, I want to have this bucha. What is that? Fuchka. In my way back, I want to try this fuchka. Okay. Can we have silence, please? Yeah. And without an egg, except fluffiness. When you make a cake without a cake? Without eggs. <laughs> ah, without eggs. Eggs. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, without except fluffiness, there are many other differences, maybe of uh, taste. Ma'am, in an uh, with eggless cake, what is the the ingredient that alternates the taste? Okay. okay. I tell you what. To uh, um, to alternate the taste. Um, of course, you can add any other type of fat to that because eggs is fat. But eggs is very important when baking cakes because it's called a structure builder. What do I mean by structure builder? That it what will uh, make the batter come together and this what will make the cake rise up. So in order to have that with eggless cake, I recommend you to add uh, soda water. Either soda water or any type of soda like Miranda, Pepsi or anything because it's full of gases. These gases will rise up the cake a little bit so it won't be hard and it's a great alternative for uh, eggs. And mom, mom, in previous, uh, like, when we were talking, you say that you face many discriminations in uh, gender-wise in your home basis. Mom, did you face the same thing when you went to the academy for the first time because it was the first academy um, a very interesting question. Thank you for that. 
Uh, to be honest, no, I did not face that because all the management in the academy, they were Swiss. And in Switzerland, uh, it's totally okay for girls to be in the kitchen and they have it in their culture. Um, so um, the, the team that we joined um, to study in that year, we were around 12. Uh, six of them were girls, so there was no problem with that. Yeah. Yes, please. Is this a line for cute boys? Mama, I actually have a question for my sister. Yeah. She bakes cakes at home. So we are vegetarian, so we don't use eggs in our cake. So everything is perfect and prices, it is fluffy. But only problem is that the crust, the outer layer of the cake is like very hard. Yes, this is because of the temperature. The temperature is very hard. Uh, so the temperature is very high, and if the crust is going very hard, tell her to reduce the amount of fat that she greases the pan with. If she greases the pan with the oil or butter or anything, tell her to reduce the amount, because it's making it very hard. And the temperature should go a little bit less. Let her bake around 170 degrees, and the cake will be perfect. One last question. Yes? Uh, Mama, I actually like grilling food. So, oh. in, why did we really participate in Yamsi Chef? Uh, ah, really? I also made grilled fishes. In okay. So, while grilling food in manual grills, that is the cold grills, the barbecue, general barbecue, ma'am, uh, how does using wet wood change the taste of a grill? Using what? Wet wood. Yeah. Ah, oh, smoky flavor. It will, uh, of course, change the whole flavor because you will have the smoke coming out of the wood. And this will change the flavor completely. You will have a different flavor. So it's always recommended to use the, the wood for that, but not from the beginning. So you finish grilling. The last stage of grilling, you add the wood, you give a smoky flavor to the grilling, to the grilled food, and the result will be amazing. What is the best kind of wood for this? Yeah, the best one is oak wood from the ox tree, uh, but of course it's very expensive. So the alternative that we go to is either uh, cherry or apple wood. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, for Sorry, the ladies. Food. Yes. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> OK. Ask, stand up, ma'am. Yeah. Actually, my question was that when we cook an oyster, how do you understand that it is fully cooked or not? When we cook what? Oysters. 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 First of all, you don't cook oysters. <laughs> Oysters, um, we prefer to eat them raw. Uh, that's why there is no cooking stage for oysters. If you decide to put them in a, in a hot grill to cook the oysters, um, just you can see that the liquid inside the shell will start to boil. One boil and eat it. If you overcook it, it will become very uh, chewy. That's why, but oysters are well known all over the world that uh, you have to eat it raw. All of it. Yeah, Thanks for okay. We have short of time. Uh, commerce and humanities are here. We have a dispersal right now. Just two minutes, we'll wind up. Yes, the last question. Yes. Marjo told about uh, eggless cakes that we can add uh, any type of fats or mirinda and Pepsi. Ma'am, won't mirinda and Pepsi uh, change the flavor of the batter? Uh, of course, it will change the flavor of the batter. Yeah. So if you use mirinda, it will be or more orangey. Uh, so uh, cola, it will be dark in color. If you are making one with chocolate, let's say. So if you don't want any change in flavor, just no, no, use normal uh, soda water. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you very much. Thank you. I hope I will see you future, future chefs and future, future hospitality uh, people. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, chef. Thank you. That was so interactive and warm. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, I was being asked a few questions when I was sitting here. Uh, so just to uh, make those things clear, you can come to the hospitality industry from any stream. If you want to sit for the examination, the entrance examination, you can come from any stream. All you need, as Chef Jihan said, is a passion. Okay, be it 
for the kitchen, be it for the F&B department, be it for the front office where you want to interact with different kinds of people and solve their problems, be it uh, the food production department, which is uh, the kitchen, you know, anywhere. But you can come from any stream, you have to be minimum class 12 passed, okay? And you have, you want to be, you want to have to be willing to, uh, to interact with people. That's the most important thing. Because nowadays, even when you become a chef, you have to come out of the kitchen and talk to your clients. Yeah? That is where, you know, the, the chefs have actually taken this entire profession to a, yes, marketing tools of the chef. They've taken it to an entirely different level, which is why Sanjeev Kapoor, can you believe this? He's a Padma Shri awardee. A chef has received the highest civilian award in India. You don't do it by just clanging some pots and pans. Thank you very much. If you have questions, you can always call up our toll-free numbers. You can call up, you know, if you have questions about hotel management. But as we said, we today we are here. Uh, we had this happy and warm interaction, uh, not just about hospitality, but it is about <coughs> food, it is about warmth, it is about our passion. Yeah? So thank you very much for having us here. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. And thanks to all of you. Thank you. Now, Sunjit will present a vote of thanks and a token of appreciation for our guests. We would like to thank both the guests for taking time out of their schedule and enrich us with their inspiring words. We were highly privileged to have you here, ma'am. We would like to gift you with a token of appreciation made by our students. Thank you. Thank you very much.